Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Good afternoon from WKYT News as we continue and we approach 1230. Yep, we were on track to have fewer traffic deaths in Kentucky this year than last. Unfortunately, a late surge in deadly crashes has pushed the total higher than state police were hoping for. As WKYT Sam Smith says, despite the increase this year, the roads are still safer than in years past. And that's our top story at 1230. Sam? An exceptional amount of fatalities this month and say the number of deaths on the roadways in 2014 is greater than 2013. State police records show that there were 638 highway fatalities last year. This year, as of today, there have been 661 deaths. However, the number of deaths in a year have been in the 700s from 2009 to 2012. So fewer people have died on the road lately compared to five years ago. Police say people in most of those fatal crashes this year were not wearing their seatbelts. This year, uh, we're going to have troopers out in full force uh, looking for uh, impaired drivers, people not wearing their seatbelts. Uh, we'll be uh, doing some uh, extra patrols in high crash areas, you know, looking for reckless drivers and things of that nature. Now, with it being New Year's Eve, state police will have a greater presence tonight to make sure everyone has a safe time. In Rockcastle County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Now, there were six traffic deaths from New Year's Eve 2012 into the New Year's Day 2013. There were none on New Year's Eve 2013 into January 1st of this year. See if we can get that uh, trend back yeah. uh, lower. Well, if you're going out to ring in the new year, you'll need to bundle up. We are going to welcome 2015 <laughs> with some pretty cold temperatures. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is here with an early check of our forecast. And it looks pretty tough out there tonight as folks will be heading out to celebrate and uh, take part in many different festivities. We are looking at cold, cold temperatures. Our New Year's Eve forecast as we go right into midnight. This is what we're looking at here. We've got our own ball that drops and boom, there you go, around 19 degrees, mainly clear and on the cold side for you tonight. So if you're going to be celebrating, keep it inside as long as you can because it will be cold out there for you. Defender, however, will remain on the quiet side. We're not tracking anything out there today other than some cloud cover, but the radar just looks for precipitation. Cold temperatures are all around us and we're having a hard time getting out of the mid-20s. We're right now at 24 in Lexington, but plenty of cold air just off to our north. And we're going to hold on to these cold temperatures tonight, even into the day tomorrow. We will go back above the freezing mark, but we'll keep the cold stuff hanging around with us. Our daily breakdown for you as we look, oh, look ahead here, the cold takes hold and it already has. We're tracking a possible mix coming into the area for late in the week and then the weekend. It's just plain old nasty. We'll have a closer look at that coming up for you in just a few minutes. It is cold. Thanks so much, Jim. A Lexington woman and four children had to dodge bullets in their own home last night. Police say they're looking for the person who fired the shots into the home on Honey Jay Court. Dominique Coffey says the shooter fired five to eight times. She had a nine-month-old, two two-year-olds, and a 17-year-old in the home with her at the time. It's just horrible. I promise it is. So just for someone to shoot in your house while you have children in there. And my niece, she's nine months old, and a bullet flew right past her head. Coffee says she thinks a family argument led to the shooter or the shooting, and that the shooter thought someone else was inside. Fire destroyed a family's home early this morning in Rockcastle County. It started about 4.15 this morning on Main Street in downtown Livingston. The family was not home at the time. We're told they had been staying with some family members after their water heater stopped working a few days ago. Firefighters had to fight the flames and below freezing temperatures. A lot of ice on the roadway and uh, firefighters got uh, really cold really quick. Makes miserable conditions. Firefighters are not sure what started the fire yet. They do plan to investigate once it is safe to go back inside. A Laurel County grand jury has indicted a hit and run suspect on an escape charge. Investigators say Terry Mullins cut off his ankle monitoring bracelet in October. Mullins spent about a month on the run before authorities caught up with him in Ohio. He'd been on home incarceration, accused of running over a 17 year old in September. The teen survived. The Sentinel Echo reports Mullins remains in the Laurel County jail 
with no bond in the escape case and a hundred thousand dollars cash bond in the hit and run case. Police say they have a lead in a string of crimes. The crime spree happened on Sunday in London. Police say a man tried to break into Thompson Drug South. We're told he used an axe and then tried to kick in the door. When that didn't work, police say he tried to use a pickup that had been stolen from Yaden's auto sales. A car was also stolen from the lot. Even though they have a lead, police tell us they still want uh, people who have information and tips to give them a call. Well, we are not the only ones dealing with a chilly New Year's. Right. Much of the West will be ringing in 2015 with freezing temperatures as well as snow and wind. As Bagad Chaban shows us here at midday, the winter weather is also expected to make tomorrow's Rose Bowl parade the coldest one in history. A harbor patrol officer was killed Wednesday morning during a storm on Catalina Island. Authorities say high winds caused several boats to break loose. Wintry conditions are also causing accidents on California roads. Overnight, fire crews in San Bernardino County used snowcats to rescue drivers on Highway 138. More than 100 cars were stranded in about a foot of snow. Slick conditions cause heavy backups on the road to Las Vegas, where revelers plan to ring in the new year. It's making me really nervous. Like my friend, I told him, like, I'm going to drive some because these people can't drive out here, and I've seen almost like 10 accidents. In Vegas, crews have sand ready in case it snows on the strip, and parts of Arizona could see a foot of snow by tomorrow. <laughs> the frigid cold is also causing concern for the annual Rose Parade in Pasadena. Many people are planning to camp out overnight to score a prime spot, but some may not realize it's supposed to be the coldest Rose Parade in its 126 year history. Make sure they're fully dressed in layers, and there's even a few things that they can do. Uh, such as bringing foot and hand, and hand warmers uh, just to help keep themselves warm. Officials say there will be warming stations set up in the area. Begachaban, CBS News, Pasadena. Well, in Northern California, strong winds knocked down trees. They did. Uh, also, <laughs> that uh, resulted in the deaths of two people there in Northern California. Well, a teacher who survived a life-threatening illness is hoping to return to the classroom in August. Sean Carlstead, who teaches at Rosenwald Dunbar Elementary in Jessamine County, lost both hands and feet to the illness. The Jessamine Journal reports Carlstead has been fitted for two prosthetic legs and a hand. She tells the paper she's learning how to be more self-sufficient every day. Well, twins, they can share looks, interests, and sometimes even health concerns. John Wesley and Gardner Adams are identical twins. The two share a deep faith in God and have excelled in baseball since they were young. Both were standout athletes at Lafayette and would go on to play college ball at Asbury. This set of twins were seemingly healthy in great shape, but their bond they thought was unbreakable almost snapped this summer when John Wesley nearly died. So the only thing I really remember is driving over there. I remember what I was wearing. My shirt, my shorts, and then I remember taking a left because I come in the back way through Belfonte, mm -hmm. and then after that I woke up in the hospital. Well, tonight on WKYT News at six, a tale of two hearts and how the decision to take a left instead of a right on the running trail saved one brother's life and changed the others forever. A very intriguing story. Hope mm -hmm. you'll uh, join us for that this evening. Yeah. So, how many people really stick to their New Year's resolutions? <laughs> right. Research shows it's not many. And new clues on what may have sparked the most recent Ebola epidemic. Ebony Williams has the details on that and more in this Better Living report. Medical investigators studying Ebola in West Africa say they may have come up with the source of the deadly outbreak. They say the first patient, a little boy, got sick while playing near a colony of infected free-tailed bats in Guinea. Fruit bats have been linked to previous outbreaks of Ebola. Children of parents who attempt suicide are five times more likely to also attempt suicide. That's according to a new study in JAMA Psychiatry. Researchers say the findings can help target interventions in high-risk families. And only 8% of Americans who make New Year's resolutions actually stay on track. Researchers say people who follow through to lose weight or quit smoking keep goals simple and specific and share their plans and progress with others. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Ebony Williams, CBS News, New York.